What do you reckon, Andy? It's two pierce, I reckon a two and I've got it, I think. Mm. Welcome to today's Impact Show. We are coaches Piers and Andy, and we're talking about aim point. We've got a special guest to take Andy through this. We're at Woburn Golf Club. Let's see if it helps Andy. Straight it in did the indeed, it Straight did indeed. In Let's take charge of your game. So we've made it over to the practice putting green here at Woburn and we're, we're super excited. Jamie Donaldson is with us. He is a putting specialist and he is the European and rest of the world director for Aimpoint. Yes. That's a pretty good title, isn't it, that? Yep, yep. You're, you're in charge of things, aren't you? Yes, I've been very <laughs> lucky to be involved from a, from a very early stage okay. and, and help the development of Aimpoint. Okay, so what we're going to do, obviously, is we want you, you guys just to understand, you know, we've all seen this on the TV, some obviously some very good players, some great successes through Aimpoint. So can you just give us a little bit of a brief uh, explanation of what Aimpoint is and the players that are using it? Well, Aimpoint's a, a green reading system. So the tip of the iceberg for us is knowing where to aim when you're putting, how to read a putt in play, and the express read, which is the feet and fingers thing that you're mm -hmm. seeing, is the, th the third product of Aimpoint. And realistically, we had to come up with a really fast way of reading putts. So we found a 10 second green read, which is incredibly accurate. Now that's really important, isn't it? Because we get, uh, we get questions, well, doesn't it take a long time? Well, you know what, if you're doing it for 10 seconds only, yeah. and you're making more putts, it's gotta be worth it, hasn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, we had a, a chart that we used to use. So uh, the second product for Aimpoint was a, a booklet called the Aim Chart, and it has 600 numbers in it. So it looks like a series of dartboards. It's an incredible green reading tool. Uh, you have to work out three factors for, to understand the chart and it'll tell you how many inches of break to allow. However, you'd need to practice it regularly. And I do think that if the people that didn't practice it enough could have got slow using the chart. Mm. So the, the, the slow play part might come from that era that we had, mm. but the, the green read with Express is 10 seconds. Three seconds inside six feet, 10 seconds for everything else. I think the great thing about this piece is that, you know, when we take our customers on the golf course, we notice that they haven't necessarily got a routine or a great process that enables them to actually produce a good putt. So I think the great thing about this is it gives them a structure, gives them a process to really give themselves as good a chance possible. And I think this is what we want to share with you guys, really help you create some awareness of what aim, aim point is all about and how it could potentially give you that structure to really, mm. you know, hold more putts. And Jamie is going to take me through the little bit of a routine and hopefully give me a bit a few pointers as well. But there are some slightly better players than who have used it. Haven't Maybe. We? Yes, we've got uh, <laughs> seven major winners using Aimpoint yeah. Express. We've had 80 plus uh, tour wins worldwide. Uh, we just come off the back of uh, three in a row on Euro Pro. The, uh, I mean, the tour is fantastic. We've got Adam Scott, Lydia Ko. At one stage, both world's number ones were using Aimpoint to read greens. Um, when it was first designed, it was designed for kids. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's incredibly easy to use, it's unbelievably easy to use. Um, it just, it works on every level. A uh, club golfer who's trying not to three putt, world class golfer who wants that 1% improvement from their putting stats, uh, it's a one size fits all. So it's decent, we know that. All right, okay, yes. so let's ju just go through Andy with this yep. putt that we have here. If you just go through the process of what you would do. Okay, so yeah. what we have here is a, it's a 20 foot putt and the make percentage on tour here would be 14%. It's also roughly the first length putt for all golfers. So statistically, 16 feet is the average first putt, no matter who you are. Uh, it's just the value that's different. <laughs> yes. It's whether they're putting for a two or a three or yeah. club level golfers are putting for four fives or sixes. So, so this is the most common putt you have and the make percentage on tour at 20 feet is 14. So 14 out of 100 attempts go in. So this is a real key area. And if you were making two out of 10 at this distance, you'd be Jordan Spieth level. So Jordan makes two out of 10. So for this read, we'd start at the ball. Yep. So pop your feet each side of the ball. And all we're doing here is working out which way the slope goes. So, so which is your low side? So yeah, left side is low here. Okay, and the reason we want to know the low, slide, the low side is because you, you don't want to touch your line. 2019, you can walk where you want, but at the moment, the rule is you can't touch the line, your intended play. So all aim pointers know to stand on the low side. So Andy's gonna walk down the left-hand side and he's gonna measure it approximately here. And he's gonna get a rating, and we've run through the ratings a little bit earlier. So he has a, an understanding of slope feel, and we give it a rating. So he's got a number there, and he gets his second number here. Okay, once he's got these two numbers in his head, he's going to use the largest one. 
and we go back to the ball. So from this position, what, what, which was the biggest slope in there? What number? Was um, it right? was here and it was sort of, be, I would say between a three and a four, I would say. Okay, and in this area? Um, I'd say three and then the closer I got, it felt like it was more close to two. Okay, so we're going to play a three. What, we're, we're going to forget that number. Okay. Because we're only interested in this part here. Yeah. So play three fingers and we've, we've already talked about the green speed earlier, so put yeah. your arm to suit the green speed. Okay. Okay, so we have a, a three finger read and just for the record, Andy will be aiming about here. Correct, yep. Yeah. <laughs> You've done that before, Jamie, haven't you? It's my party trick. So I've got basically, I'm going from the, from the inside, from the left side of the cup. Middle. From the middle of the yes. cup, okay, from the middle of the cup there. So, okay. so here's the thing, in a class, most, most people would see half that break visually. Yeah. Okay, so, so before we hit the putt, what I see from coaching is people would say that's too much. Visually, they'd choose less than that, but people make putts. So do they have to increase their speed to make this putt or are they pushing or misaiming? So the big thing about aim point is once we have a tangible read yeah. that we can, we can measure, and if, it's, if that's too much, it should have been a two. If it's too less, it should be a four. We can learn from our missed putts, but the important thing is, once we have a decent read, start line and speed become important. If you can't read a putt accurately, a good start line or good speed will go against you. So if we think of the, the, the corners of great putting is where to aim, control your speed and control your start line, yeah. this has to be our, you know, this has to be our start point. Mm. Everything works off this. Because you can misread and make putts. Does that make you a good putter? I think I think the interesting thing for, for us is here, and you're probably not gonna like how we say this exactly, <laughs> but the, the beauty for aim point for us, as Andy said, it gives people a routine. Now, even if they get it a little bit wrong, yes. From this distance, yeah. they're not going to be three putting because the stats, are you talking about make percentage on tour, yeah. but from here, amateur golfers who are watching this, three put a lot, don't they? Well, a, a club level golfer, around 17 handicappers, so we call them an 89 player, Yeah, they would three putt one in four attempts at this range. So actually maybe knocking it in, you know, you're not trying to be Jordan Spieth that two no. out of 10, you're actually trying to two yeah. put. You know, what, what would be good on this putt is a putt that looks like it can go in, it either does or it doesn't. Because yeah. if it misses low, you know it can't go in. Yeah. If you've had to hit it hard to make it, then you might have a four or five footer coming back. Yeah. So realistically, the, the, I would encourage players at 20 feet to hit putts that are missing high side or going in. Yeah. But we want to watch them with anticipation as opposed to hitting a putt and knowing it's not in. And what's interesting about this, Jamie, as well, is that if, let's say, the players were using their eyes and, as you said, yeah. they under break, which most people do, well, if I'm just using my feet and going off the... Um, the scale, let's say, it's very hard to actually underread, isn't it? Because I'm saying, well, yeah. okay, if I'm going with this, this is a three, there's my line, okay, I'm using my feet, I'm going with that, and I'm not just relying on my eyes to, to do well, that. Well, the green designers know how to put shapes in around the, a hole or around the edge of the green to, to fox people. So green designers can put shapes in that would lead you the wrong way. I mean, this is a great green with loads of show, uh, shape. Uh, there's several optical illusions on this green where you'd think the putt was straight or breaking the other way. And that's because you've got high points in the wrong place. You know, this wasn't created by glacial erosion <laughs> downhill. They, this is all sculpted by machines. So they can put slopes where they want. So we're never looking for the high point or the low point in this case. The ball only knows what it touches. And that's between the ball and the hole. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we're only measuring in these areas. Um, you know, there's the other thing about this read, well, before we hit it, is... I'm this dying is, to have a go, by the yeah, way. I'm, to have a go. Go. <laughs> I'm holding well, it back. Well, well, this is a very linear, this is what we call a linear aim, which is you aiming at a point high of the hole and letting gravity take it away. But also with aim point, people that like to see the curve, we can predict curve. So one of the other things we coach is for the players that want to visualise the ball's roll, I could tell you exactly where this ball will be on this putt. So we can actually predict the point it will roll over through the putt. So people that feel that you know just aiming straight doesn't work for them, they like to imagine the ball rolling in where it enters the hole, we've also worked with that out as well. Yeah. You've been busy then, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my line's good now, so I'm happy with that. Now, yep. it's interesting when I look at this now, I, I almost feel that I want to go more. Okay. I don't know why, but I think because it is, I know it's a big slope. I, yeah. Again, 
maybe from experience, I'd hate to miss it on the low side. I sort of want to air. So that's, that's a good strategy. Close um, to that side. And people that tend to underread putts <clears throat> will find a way of starting it higher. Yeah. So manipulation I, through, through manipulation. the Manipulation. Yeah. So, so what you've probably come to the, to the realisation is, having misread putts before you learn aim point, is you need to start it higher. Yeah. But hit the putt. Okay, I'm going I'm to stick to the line as well. Please. So I'm just going to do my sort of routine here. I'm going to trust that there. It's interesting that he's obviously, he's using very much his eyes there, isn't he? You know, only, a only lot of times you don't up. need to do that, do you? Only to you? line up. Well, that's where I'm starting to think he might like to, to see where the ball will be through the putt. Okay. I'm thinking now he's more of a curve seer. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. Okay. yeah. Good. So, so we've hit that two foot past. One foot past is is the aim point preference. Yeah, maybe okay. a little firm for me. It's a little. One. It's a great part. I mean, I look, watch that, thinking that can go in. So yeah. that, that would yeah. rate. That would be your eight out of ten putt. If it missed low, it's a it's a five or less quickly. Okay. Because you know it's bad. Um, it's just a bit long. Yeah. And the majority of the guys that we would see who we coach Pierce, they would very rarely miss on that high side. It would never look like it's going to go in, and that's the difference, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, the funny thing was he thought there was more break okay yeah, yeah. i did yeah did yeah. so yeah so for me that was i was i i would have normally gone on the the higher yeah. side than that mm. but then to do that i would have had to hit it softer yeah yeah do you want and, to and, hit it and, again? i'll go i'll go one yeah. more well you're breaking one. the rules aren't we here I'm stand here well, okay <laughs> i do have a, do you know what I have, a, I have a rule which is never hit the same putt twice of course uh, That's because a good idea. it causes manipulations and what people can i just mention it now yeah the, the goldilocks syndrome i call it which is too little too much just right okay I don't believe the players learn anything by that apart from they've thrown sighters out and then found what works. But in, you only get one go in play. Yeah. And what I see a lot of people do is they'll miss a putt left and the next one is they, they'll, they'll stick to the same aim and then they'll move the face so they don't miss left. They've just learnt manipulations. However, I'd like you to aim at that tee peg and I want Pierce to have a look at your aim. Okay. Because um, what you'll find is Andy was... Is this in the same place? Yeah, Andy was actually aiming higher than the tee peg. Okay. And that would suggest because his... Well, I, I think he felt like the ball was going to break more. Yeah. yeah. So he, he subconsciously aimed higher. So have a look at his aim. Okay. Okay, that's better. <laughs> that's better. Yeah, that's oh, better. Really? It's, it is right, but it's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's do you probably... move, move him to square? Yep. And then we'll hit the putt again. Okay. Happy with that? Uh, yeah. It's a little right, but it's better. Let's go here a bit. All right. Okay. Yeah, we're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's good. interesting on that one. I still, I actually still <laughs> felt like I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to push it. Well, well this, this is the, you know, I said the green is the tip of the iceberg. In, in two putts, we're, we're learning about your style. We're learning about what you do, and this is the real work and the real change. And you know how we work with players and club-level golfers is, is now that we've found what he's, what he's doing subconsciously, we can start to make changes. Yeah, and it depends on the putt as well, doesn't it? It's not necessarily the yeah. same for every putt. I mean, right to left, the left to right, it can be different, exactly. can't it? Uh, this is a big breaking putt. Three is yeah. a big number, and and you've got to match speed and line perfectly on these. So there's times to be aggressive and times where you'd be very happy with that. I mean, I'd be still happy with that. Again, on the on the make percentage, you know, and, and that's a, look, that's a two-putt on Pierce would definitely give me that if I was playing with him. <laughs> I wouldn't oh, have given him the first one, though. No. I wouldn't have given him the first one. Well, um, and, and, and later I'd like to show you the drop point, we call it, which is plotting the curve. Okay. Because I'd like to see how he puts the picture together when there's no tee peg, but just an intermediate target to roll over. Yeah. Brilliant. That's what, okay. I, that's what I normally do. I'm normally the curve, the there curve visualizer. Oh, so. there we are, yeah. <laughs> okay, look, so, look. Jamie, thank you so much. Come over here a second. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the, the, the thing is here, just getting a little bit of information from this and maybe saying, well, look, let's get a process. Let's get a green reading process. That in itself is going to really help you. But if someone wants to... Process is king. I mean, it's, it's process is everything because the process will be the same whether he's putting to win a tournament, yeah. putting to, to miss a cup, whatever. It's the same process. And what I saw in the early days was as players got more into contention, yeah. they took longer over their putts. Yeah which means they're coming out of routine. Yeah. Um, the, the aim point routine hardly ever changes. And, and Adam, that's exactly what I was going to come to. The, the fact that you have a process and a, ru mm. a routine, it doesn't matter whether it's the first putt or the last putt, you know, the exactly. pressure putt or the non-pressure putt, mm. you know, you are treating it the same. Yeah, and, and you know, it, 
if you're reading this putt with your eyes and you're, you're walking around the hole and looking, you're trying to imagine what it would do and it looks different from behind the hole and then you stand side on and you start thinking, make a decision, make a decision. I really don't like this putt. I've got 20 feet on a 3% break. You know, this isn't my favorite direction. Mm. Or you can go in and say, I feel this, I feel this. That's where I need to aim. Yeah. Uh, and it takes the guess, the, the sort of guessing and the confusion away, let's I say. Think, yeah, and I think it takes the sort of, the, I think we're staying present with the read. We're staying, we're problem solving in the now, not what happened last week when I had this part and yeah. what might happen if I hit it wrong. Um, you know, the, the thing about this also is, if that broke more, he can say, hold on, it wasn't a three, it was a four. Hmm. And then he would, on the next green, say, that feels similar to that, I'll go four. Yeah, you're sort of you're constantly learning and, adap and adapting your 100%. your senses to, to improve so that. We call it an organic read, you know, you, you, you feed off the last result. Yeah. You know, in this situation, that speed was great, the curve was like a three, we've got to stop Andy from starting it high. Yeah. That, yeah. that would be the first point of call for you. What, what, what are you doing that makes you start the ball higher than you intended? That would be where performance comes in. And, and this is this we is great. Hours on this, we? Oh yeah, you know what we could, <laughs> and I think I think we should. <laughs> um, but no, we can't because you need other things, other videos to watch. So I think look, the the good thing is that, you know, hopefully if you were interested in aim point or what is aim point, you've got a little bit of an idea. And as much as Jamie and the rest of the guys know about aim points, it's a 10 second read. And it yeah. was so simple how you can go through this process. So if someone wants to come and see you yeah. or get information, what do they need to do? Okay, well, there's, there's three good ways of getting hold of me. Uh, I use Twitter, which is at Golf Donaldson. Instagram is Aimpoint Golf Europe. Or you can email me on jamie at aimpointgolf.co.uk. All of that well, is going right? down below in the description. Yeah. yeah, so make sure you check that out. And also, one other thing at the end of the month, British Masters is yes, here at Woburn. Absolutely. And on the Friday, I believe yes. anyone, well, anyone watching this, anyone can turn up anyone, for it's, free. It's free entry. Unbelievable. Uh, it's, it's in association with uh, prostate cancer. Yeah. So um, we'll put something in the link how they yeah, register. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and and it's free to come and watch. You've got the world's best senior golfers playing at Woburn on the Duke's course, which is behind us which here. Is beautiful, by the way. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. Uh, so that'd be great to come and see some of the world's best uh, yeah, yeah. performing close and, quarters. And you'll be here. I'll be here. Yes, yeah. Go. I've got some clients I'll be working with. Around with his hand before, in yes, yeah, yeah. The guy who walks around like this. <laughs> That's it. It's not a Star Trek thing. <laughs> <end point>. yes. <laughs> and also, actually, we, we're not finished with Jamie yet. We're going to do another video straight after this. Three steps to hold more putts. So yep. make sure you check, check it out. It's our Me and My Golf Weekly that's just going live on our website today. So Hello, Me and My Golfers, and welcome to your Me and My Golf Weekly. And we have a specialist on site with us today, Jamie Donaldson, who is the leader um, for in Europe for Aimpoint. And I'm going to give you a, a, a small slice of Aimpoint green reading for putts inside six foot. Tell me what you feel there. Is it more than this or less than this first Less one? than that one, All this right. is about a one. Tip number two is we've got to get into speed now, and uh, speed is everything. So, so we're going to hit a ten foot putt. Right then, Jamie, start line. I can put a tee peg either side of this golf ball. So what I want you to do, Pierce, is experiment with a little bit of a, a longer back swing. So let's just swing it a little bit longer. There you go. Jamie, thanks ever so much for your help. Thank you very much, I Andy. I need some more practice. Thanks, Piers. I like the way he said help there. He, he needs the help. Yeah, he's <laughs> first sign up. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. Now, if you did enjoy that, make sure you hit the like button. It helps us grow. If you've got any questions about it, comment below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Yes, and if you want to see those three tips to help you hold more puts, then all you need to do is click the link in the corner there. It'll take you straight to meandmygolf.com, and we will look forward to seeing you over there.